Your action inspires others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more. Then you are a leader. If a leader challenges accepted thinking and pushes existing boundaries, then she is a transformative leader. Through leadership, a leader could touch the lives of many people. This is the story of a woman who dared to push the boundary and ended up building a national institution against great odds. A woman who rose from very humble beginnings to the very top of the business world. Born in 1955 in Kidangari village, South Imenti in Meru County, she is the fourth child of Mr. and Mrs. Henry Riria. Her earliest encounter with books was at Kidangari Primary School. She set herself the task of getting an education. The need to rise above her circumstances made her take her studies seriously. Her industry bore fruit when she got admission at Precious Blood Girls Kilungu for her secondary education. In 1972, the youthful and very beautiful Nkwene joined Dar es Salaam University in Tanzania after having passed her A-levels. She ended up taking a Bachelor of Arts in Education, majoring in English and Economics. In 1974, while only 19 years old, a life-turning event occurred to the youthful Nkwene. She conceived and had her first baby, Catherine McKenna. My mother never expressed her feelings towards my pregnancy, but my father said she will not have that baby here, a baby made out of sin. Soon after her graduation, Jennifer secured a scholarship to study in the United Kingdom. She carried her baby along with her. She believed that her life was headed to the skies. In 1978, she was awarded a postgraduate diploma in education and the following year, she graduated with a Master of Arts degree in Education Administration from the University of Leeds. She left the United Kingdom the same day she passed her dissertation. I had an opportunity to live in UK. I had an opportunity to live in the US. But to me, these places never appealed to me. I had to come home. She envisioned an institution in which any woman could become as successful as her dreams could let her. Opening wide her doors to opportunity, she has let in every single woman who has been willing to pay the price of hard work. It was in October 1991, however, when a real change of calling occurred to Dr. Riria. The Ford Foundation and UNDP supported her appointment to rehabilitate Kenya Women Finance Trust, the institution had only four permanent employees, zero clients, and two million uncollected loans. Within six months of licensing, Kenya Women Finance Trust operation broke even and recorded a profit of 415 million shillings before tax. She led Kenya Women Finance Trust deposit taking microfinance to scoop the 2011 Excellence Leadership Award from the Women's World Banking and MasterCard Foundation. They looked all over African microfinance practicing institutions and they asked which one of them is making major impact at the target group. And they answered, the Kenya Women Finance Trust. She survived a poor rural background. <laughs> What I would like to tell everybody is that the past may affect your life, but it does not determine your future. What determines your future? It is what, how you want the world to be when you are not there anymore. 